Welcome back to AlgaJS. Today's question is leak code 417, Pacific Atlantic water flow. So you have an M by M rectangular island that borders both the Pacific Ocean and Atlantic Ocean. The Pacific Ocean touches the left and top edges and the Atlantic Ocean touches the right and bottom edges. So the island is partitioned into a group of square cells. You're given an M by M integer matrix height where height RC represents the height above sea level. The island receives a lot of rain and the rainwater can flow to neighboring cells directly north south, east and west, so up, down, right and left. If the neighboring cell's height is less than or equal to current cell's height, return a 2D list of grid coordinates result where result RC denotes that rainwater can flow from cell RC to both the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. Okay, great. So we have a 2D board right here. And the left side is bordering the Pacific. The top side is bordering the Pacific. The right side is bordering Atlantic and the bottom side is bordering Atlantic. So we need to work out which of these cells can reach both the Pacific and Atlantic based on the constraints that water can only flow from higher values to lower values or higher values to values that are equal to those values. And we can only move up, right, down and left. So this is a standard graph problem. We'll probably be utilizing BFS or DFS in this solution. So as you can see in this example, all of these values in yellow can reach both the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. Okay, so firstly, let's quickly discuss how this water flows. So say we take five here. Water can flow in four directions. It can flow up, down, left, and right, and it can flow from higher values to lesser values or values that are equal to each other. So we need to make sure that we reach the Pacific and Atlantic from this position. If we can't, then it's not a valid point within this grid. So let's have a look. So five can flow to four, four can flow to two, two is touching Pacific, five can flow to three, three can flow to one, one is bordering the Atlantic. So this is true. So how do we go about solving this? Well, as I mentioned, we can use BFS or DFS. It makes more intuitive sense to utilize BFS in this solution because it's essentially the shortest path. So we can forget about DFS. Now within this BFS, we are going to have to do two breathless search. So we're gonna to have to do one for the Pacific, and one for the Atlantic, because we need to find whether a value can reach the Pacific and the Atlantic. And then we need to do some additional logic to state whether a value in the board can reach both the Pacific and the Atlantic. But as with any BFS, we have a Q. So we're going to have a Pacific Q and we are also going to have an Atlantic Q. And what we're going to push into this is going to be the position of each value within the board and what we're going to push into say this Pacific Q is all the values within this board that are neighboring the Pacific. Okay, so all of these values and all of these values are going to be going into the Pacific. So the positions in this grid will populate the Pacific Q. So let's write a few out. So we've got zero, 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 one, and one, zero. I'm not going to populate the entire queue, otherwise this would take all day. So that's Pacific. We'd also do the same with Atlantic. So all the positions in the board that are touching the Atlantic. So all of these values and all of these values, all of their positions are going to be added into Atlantic. So we've got five, five here, five, four and four, five. So we're just going to do the same for Atlantic. With BFS, as you probably know, we're just going to take from the top of the queue and we're going to look at this value. We're going to check all of its neighbors and carry out breathless search on them. Now, as you can see, the left side and the above arrow are out of bounds. So we need to take that into consideration and we need to create some kind of is valid function to check whether it's inbound. So if we're outside of the board in any of the directions, so if I is less than zero, J is less than zero, I is greater than heights dot length minus one, J is greater than height zero dot length minus one. All of these are out of bounds, so we just forget about those and we continue through the BFS on the other values. So can we go to three and can we go to two? Well, as stated in the question, water flows from higher values to lower values, but that's getting to the Pacific and the Atlantic. So in this case, we are looking for greater values, right? Because two can then flow to one, three can then flow to one. 
So we check to see whether this value is greater than this value. If it is, then we can go down and BFS that value. And the same with two here. So we can go here and we can go here. So we push those values into the queue. So zero, zero, one, and one, zero. So here we have an issue, right? We've already got these within the queue. So if we push them into the queue, so zero, one, one, zero, we're gonna have to visit those again. So we need to keep track of where we visited. So we're gonna have to populate another array. So we're gonna be creating a 2D array of the same size as this board, and we're gonna initialize it with false in every position. So as soon as we take the value off the queue to visit it, we add or we update this visited array to true. So the position is set to true. So this has now been seen. So if we pop off the same value again, we can look into this visited array and see that it's already been seen. So we can continue. So we can check two, two can be visited. We look at its different directions. Two can go to two and it can go here because they're equal values, can't go here. So we push these positions into Q and BFS on those. So I'm not gonna go through the entire board on this. I'm just gonna update this array as to what the values are supposed to be. And then we can move on to the Atlantic. It's pretty much the same process. So I'll speed up this play. Okay, so we have shifted off of Q all the positions. We've set our visited array to true on all those positions that we've checked. And we've made sure that all of these positions can reach the Pacific Ocean. So they can reach these positions here. So these are all the values within the board that can reach those positions, okay? Now it's very much the same process for the Atlantic. So we shift off of Q, we look at this position, we go to all of its neighbors, and we carry out BFS on all of those as long as those values are greater than or equal to the current value we're on. And we do that for all of the positions. And if they are a valid position, then we push that into Q, and then we shift off, push into Q, shift off. You get the idea. So what we're going to have at the end is a visited array for the Atlantic as well. And all of these values which have been changed to true can reach the Atlantic Ocean. So as you can see, we have two arrays, two visited arrays, one for Pacific Ocean, one for Atlantic Ocean. Now we have some additional logic to carry out in order to work out which positions in the board can reach both the Pacific and Atlantic. And because these boards are both the same size, we can carry out a nested for loop, passing in the board's width and height as parameters. And we can check whether the position we're on, say this position, for example, is true for both this array and this array. If it is, then we can create a results array and we can add into the results array that position. So that'd be five zero. And we do this throughout the entire board. And what we're going to get is all the positions in the board that are both true for reaching the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. So that's the main idea of how you'd calculate the solution, right? How you'd build out this algorithm. So time complexity for this one is going to be O of M times N, where M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. And then space is also going to be O of M times N, where N is again, the number of rows and n is the number of columns. Okay, so firstly, let's extract out the rows length and the columns length. We're going to need two queues, so we're gonna have Pacific queue, which is going to be equal to an array, and Atlantic Q, which is also going to be equal to an array. Now we're going to loop through the entire board and push into the Pacific Q if the current value is touching the Pacific and push into the Atlantic Q if the current value is touching the Atlantic. So if i is equal to zero, or j is equal to zero, then we're bordering the Pacific, so we can push into the Pacific Q, that position. If i is equal to m minus one, or j is equal to n minus one, 
we're bordering the Atlantic. So we can push into that the position. So now we need to carry out the bulk of the algorithm, which is the BFS. So we're going to create a function for this because we need to reuse it. We're going to pass in Q. We need to state whether the value we're on is valid or we need to make that check. So we're going to pass in X and Y, so the coordinates. So if X is greater than or equal to zero and Y is greater than or equal to zero and X is less than M and y is less than n therefore the position we're on is valid we're going to have directions or deltas in order to move to the next position so const directions and this is going to be equal to all the directions we can take and then we need to create our visited array which is going to be a 2d array where all values are initialized to false. And now we can start the breadth of search. So while Q dot length is available, we can extract out X and Y. So we'll just do Q dot shift we'll set that position in visited to true and then we need to loop through the directions right so let dir of directions so the directions array we created above is going to make sure that we go up down left and right in our next positions so firstly we need to extract the next x which is going to be current x plus directions at zero so the zeroth position we need to extract out next y, which is going to be y plus do at position one. And then we need to check if that position is valid. So next x, next y. And we also need to check if it's already within visited. So if it's either invalid or it's been visited, we can just continue. And before we push the next positions into the queue for checking for BFS, we need to check whether the height at the next position is greater than or equal to the height at the current position. So if heights at next X, next Y is greater than or equal to heights at X, Y, then we can push into queue next X, next Y. And then we need to return visited so visited is going to be the array that we created. It's going to have all the true values for all the values that are bordering the Pacific. And it's also going to be another array for all the values that are bordering the Atlantic. So let's extract those. So Pacific is equal to BFS. And we're going to pass in the Pacific queue. Atlantic is going to be BFS Atlantic queue. And then finally, we need to populate a results array that match up the true values for both the Pacific and Atlantic. So let x equals zero. x is less than m. So if Pacific at x, y, and Atlantic at x, y are both true, then we've found a match. We have found a position that can reach both the Pacific and Atlantic. So we can push that into our results array. And then we can just return result. Let's give that a go. Submit it. And there you go.